So Rich, Journey to Bethlehem, this is a musical. What can people expect from this? Well, I joke around that it's kind of a, an intersection of the nativity story meets La La Land. Uh, it is a full-on narrative live-action musical with choreography and dance and joy and fun and a villain in King Herod played by Antonio Banderas. So they can expect an incredible journey that is harmonious with Scripture, uh, but really um, relatable to people that, are, that don't even know the story, aren't familiar with the story. So I, so, I got to ask about Antonio Banderas yeah. in a second, but what made you want to do this as a musical? Well, I wish I could take credit for that original birth of the idea, but it came from our creator and writer and director, Adam Anders, who had the idea almost 20 years ago and was struggling with it and creating it and developing it. And it came our way a couple of years ago when he got the script to us and I read it and I love the concept. I love what it wanted to be, but I didn't love the script. So we actually passed on it. And I guess Adam had similar feedback and he just went back to the drawing board. And instead of using an outside screenwriter, he wrote it himself. He brought up a writing partner on and it showed up about a year or so later in my inbox. And uh, I read it and called, called them within 10 minutes and said, we're in. Oh, wow. Uh, you know, so it shifted that much it from was, I don't it, want it to I want this. It, I want it immediately. Um, and so it was just great to come on board. And uh, we worked with them to shape the final parts of the development of the script and then started prep and shot it in Spain uh, in January and February and March of this uh, year. And it was a great experience. So Antonio Banderas, that is a really interesting casting decision. How did how did that happen? Well, um, Antonio was very high on our list early on, and um, we kind of kept narrowing it down, and he was the guy. And we were having these conversations with his agent that were somewhat encouraging, and we just kind of kept kept going. And at, at some point, we felt like we were being strung out, right? And um, by the time we got to Spain, we still had not got a clear indication that Antonio was going to be in, and he was going to be shooting in four weeks. And so we were having to look for other options and uh, the director and our producers had this idea and they said, well, look, Antonio lives just a few hours from here and he owns a, a theater and he's currently producing a musical. And so they went to Malaga in Spain, uh, bought tickets, went to the show, got backstage, talked to Antonio, you know, played him the song that he would sing in the movie, talked to him about the story. And Antonio was like, I'm in. He, that landed the plane. That landed it by cutting through right to Antonio. And I think Antonio saw the passion of Adam Anders and the producers and hit, listened to the music and realized this music is very special. It's very, very good. And, uh, and we landed Antonio and he brought a magic to the character of King Herod. You know, King Herod is, you know, was the bad guy in the story. And Adam had crafted some really nice moments where he's both evil and funny. But uh, Antonio just kind of cranked it up to 11. He just brought so much of, um, of kind of a particular feel to Herod that was, that was um, you know, clearly evil, but incredibly funny. Yeah. And uh, so he provides a lot of comedy relief at the same time as being the villain. Yeah, I mean, what's it like to take, and we'll talk about the musical aspect of this, but when you take a story that we know to be true as Christians, we believe it happened, we know it happened, you're reading it on pages, and there's something about bringing that to life on screen, right? You're just, you're talking about the comedy, the things right. that you wouldn't think of. These are human beings who, just like we do, we they lived, they laughed, they, you know, what's it like to do that, to take a biblical story and to bring it to life as a musical? It, it's, it, it's fabulously fun to watch on, on, un, unravel or, or kind of lay out. And, um, it's really fun to kind of live in what I loved. What Adam did was he lived in some other characters. We don't think about, we know Joseph's reaction when he heard about Mary. Okay. But what was Joseph's mom's reaction? <laughs> okay. What was, what was Joseph's dad's reaction? And what was, what was, what could have Mary's parents thought about this and living in those moments. And it makes it, it's heartwarming. It's funny. It, it it's relatable in the human experience, and I think it's that's real. What, it's yeah. very real because these are things that happen, right? So again, yeah, I, I love those those thoughts. Now, you've been doing this for a long time, you know, creating films in the faith and family friendly space, 
and shows. And what, what for you has been the biggest lesson in that? Because it's been an interesting journey. You've done a lot of projects. This is just the latest. What have you learned? Well, I think the biggest lesson I've learned is um, I tend to, I, I'm a, I, I think of myself as a collegial kind of go along to get along kind of guy. And um, what I've learned from actually some really good creatives that I work with is that there is a time to kind of throw down the gauntlet, to draw a line in the sand. If you really strongly believe and you have good logic as to why you believe a certain creative argument or creative direction. And, uh, you know, I've learned, I learn lessons all the time, but the biggest, best lessons you learn are when you fail. And through some failures, I've kind of drawn the conclusion that I need to be more assertive just as an executive at Sony uh, in really um, communicating clearly my strong position on certain creative elements, and uh, but remaining easy to work with and, and open to uh, to discussion. So truth I think and love. That's the, it is. It is. Yeah. <laughs> truth and love balance. What would you say? You know, when you look at this space, it's a space where there are millions of people in this audience that are craving this content, and for a long time, that audience was really underserved, and in some ways, I think is still underserved, but is becoming more served as time goes on. Why do you think it was such an underserved audience for so long? Well, you know, that's a really good question, Billy. I'm not sure. Um, I do know that when you think about faith in media, and specifically uh, audiovisual content, you see these waves. Um, when, when motion pictures first started, most of the content being created was biblical in nature because it was a commonly understood IP, right? Mm -hmm. uh, intellectual property. People knew the story in the book. Uh, and then it kind of fell out of fashion uh, and then we saw the second wave kind of in the 50s and 60s with kind of robe and sandal movies. And, but still, no one was really bringing faith into the contemporary drama space. Um, you know, why that is, I, I, think, I think that, you know, the, theaters, the theater experience is designed to be in, entertaining. And so you have things like Star Wars and things that, that are kind of titillating, racy content that uh, maybe common denominators of that within pop culture, bringing people in to spend money. And I think, honestly, it took some creative uh, people that started to be able to tell dramatic contemporary stories in a way that had themes that were accessible to kind of the unchurched. And, uh, and while those things were kind of bubbling up, Mel Gibson released The Passion of the Christ. And what happened was the it was such a massive success that all the Hollywood studios, whether they ended up doing anything about it, all the Hollywood studios realized that there was this massive underserved audience. They had to pay attention. They had to pay attention. And then suddenly there was more of an openness. If someone came in the door with a script and said, this is faith-based, it's not about the Bible, it's not in biblical times, it's about a fireman, uh, you know, it's about a policeman, um, it's a contemporary drama. And I think the doors were open because of that. And then we've seen this resurgence over the last, uh, I guess, Passion of the Christ was 2004. Then you had 2014, you know, the year of the Bible. Then yes. you had, you know, you've had yeah. these, these, and now you had the Jesus Revolution. You know, yeah. So it's, it's interesting. And now you've got Journey to Bethlehem. You have these projects that are coming. Those doors are open. You know, final question for you, and it's kind of a big one, but where do you see this going? You know, where do you see faith and family-friendly entertainment going from here? Well, you know, I think all content goes where the consumers are, right? And so there has been obviously an explosion of mobile devices. Um, there's been an explosion of portable devices, whether they're in vehicles, um, even airplanes now, you know, they used to have the monitors and now they're like, hey, bring your own device, right? Um, and so I think that there is, um, I know our response to it was, Affirm Films was purely theatrical feature films. And over the last couple of years, we've started a television division. We've started an originals division making streaming content. And we're trying to find ways to bring in quality storytellers with modest budgets, um, with great talent and performances that can fit in these various streaming and other places. Um, because the theater experience is still very valid, but more and more people are consuming content outside the theater. Um, and so we're, we're going to where the people are. That's what we're really commanded to do, right? And that's how, and that's how you do it, right? That's, that's right. how you do it. Well, Rich, really appreciate your time today. Thank you, Billy.